next speaker is Tamar. And um, I assume you all know that this paper won the Mar Honorable Mar Prize Honorable Mention at ICCV. And those of you that missed ICCV, I think it was completely touching to see that out of four best papers, two came from Israel, and also Shimon Ullman got uh, his uh, lifetime award. I forget how they name it. So first, let's clap for this award here in Israel. I was very proud, personally. And uh, Tamara is going to present this work, and she told me she can take any tough question. She's been asked all the difficult questions, so you have 15 minutes to prepare to tackle her afterwards. Good luck. Thank you, Lee. Um, so my name is Tamara Cham. I'll present the work Syngen, Learning a Generative Model from a Single Natural Image, uh, which was done jointly with my supervisor, Tomo Michaeli, from the Technion, and also with Tali Decker, who's currently at Google Research, um, and will be joining the Weizmann Institute next year. So in the past few years, we see a dramatic boost in the performances of many image manipulation uh, and processing tasks. Now, one of the main reasons for this is that most of the recent algorithms are based on generative adversarial networks, or GANs. Now, the main idea behind GANs is that given a data set of real images, GANs are trained to generate fake, yet realistic, new image samples. So, for example, um, given a data set of image of faces, we can generate new faces of people who do not really exist. Or if we have a data set of volcanoes, we can generate new volcanoes. And even uh, new anime figures. However, learning to generate such high quality complex images requires very large data set of images. And even when, when such data set is exist, it often re restricts us to work with only a specific class of images like mountains in this example. So what if we have only a single image? We introduced Syngen, which is a powerful generative model that can be learned just from a single natural image. Given only a single training image, Syngen is able to generate high quality, diverse samples that carry the same visual content as the image. Syngen is completely unconditional. It maps random noise into realistic image samples and does not require any object class labels or external data. This allows us to deal with general natural scenes. Once trained, Syngen can produce high quality, diverse image samples of arbitrary dimensions which semantically resemble the training image, yet contain new object configuration and structures. Here, for example, you can see a new canopy layout and a new composition of birds. Training again on a single image and has been previously explored in the context of textures for the task of texture expansion and texture generation. However, these methods are not designed to deal with real images with complex and non-repetitive global structures, as you can see in this example. In contrast, Syngen is able to deal with general natural scenes. Shochar et al. were the first to propose a single image GAN for natural images. And actually, they uh, show in GAN here last year. However, their method is only, uh, only solve the specific task of image retargeting, whereas our framework suits many different image manipulation tasks. For example, super resolution, harmonizing an object into an image, editing an image, transferring a paint into a realistic image, and also producing a short video clip from just a single image. We solve all these tasks with the same unified approach and without any additional information or further training. And again, with only a single training image example. So how does it work? 
The key idea is to generate a fake image whose statistic of fetches is the same as that as the real image at multiple scales. To achieve this, we start by learning to generate the coarsest scale of the image. This is done adversarially with a patch discriminator, which attempts to classify each of the image patches as real or fake. Other than the adversarial loss, we also have a reconstruction loss, which requires that there is a specific input noise that will generate the real image of that scale. This way, we ensure that the real image is included in our Latin space. Once training is complete, we keep this generator fixed and move to learn to generate the next level. This only requires learning to add fine details on top of the generated images from the previous scale. Again, we use a patch discriminator, train on that specific scale, and we optimize the same loss function. We repeat this process up to the finest, finest image scale. Now, all the generators and discriminators have the same lightweight architecture with a receptive field of 11 by 11 pixels. Therefore, they effectively capture structure of different sizes within the image. Since the architecture is fully convolutional, at test time, we can generate images of arbitrary sizes and aspect ratios by simply changing the spatial dimension of the ejected noise maps. We can train a Syngen model with different number of scales. A model with a small number of levels only captures textures. But as the number of levels increases, Syngen manages to capture larger structures as well as the global arrangement of objects within the scene. In practice, we always adjust the number of levels such that the effective receptive field at the coarsest level is about 40% of the short axis of the image. This is what allows Syngen to generate both large structures and fine details. Note that the training image can be of any size. To quantify the realism of our generated images, we perform user studies through Amazon MTurk. Images were randomly chosen from the places dataset. We train a single model for each of these images and produce random samples. We had two types of tests. A per test, following the protocol of Zang et al, where a real image was shown to the to the user alongside our fake version of it, and the user had to pick the fake. And an unpaired test, where a single image was shown to the user which had to determine whether it's real or fake. The confusion rate in both cases are relatively high, with the unpaired test nearing 50%, which is the ultimate score in this task. This is while the fake images are significantly deviated from their corresponding real images, and you can see our paper for more details regarding that. The multi-scale architectures uh, also allows us to control the diversity of the generated samples at test time. When starting the generation from the coarsest scale, we get highly varied samples. However, we can start the generation from a finer scale and inject a down sample uh, version of the training image as an input. This way, we can modify only finer image features. This is useful when the image contains one large silent object and we want to keep its global structure intact. Here, for example, starting the generation from the coarser scale, we get non-realistic zebra samples. However, when starting the generation from the second coarser scale, only the zebra stripes get modified. Syngen's ability to preserve the global structure of the injected image and to modify only finer details has many applications. Specifically, note what happens if instead of the down sample training image, we inject a different image to the trained model. Syngen can only generate images with the same patch distribution as the training image. Thus, attributes from the training image are transferred to the injected image, producing an image to image translation effect but with only a single training example. Note that this task is challenging even for models like CycleGun, 
which were trained on thousands of examples. And this property can be used for many image manipulation tasks. For example, we can train Singan on this image of the mountains and then at test time inject this paint into the second course scale. The result is a realistic image that contains the global structure of the paint, but the appearance of the training image. Here is another example for transferring a clip art into realistic image. Here, simple color spots are transferred into cows. For comparison, here's what happens when using a single image style transfer method. In contrast to Singan, these do not transfer any semantic content. Similarly, we can input an edited version of the training image. Here we simply copy and paste a few patches. Singan translates this edit into a coherent and photorealistic image. Photoshop's Content Aware Move is not able to generate realistic results for this challenging edit. Here's another example for image editing. Here, Singan modifies more global structures so as to match the edit, whereas the Content Aware Move performs more local changes. We can also, also harmonize an object into the training image. Singan tailors the pasted object texture to match the background. This blending effect is different than other approaches like deep painterly harmonization, which impose color matching with the background. The chosen injection scale has a strong influence on the result. The coarser the scale we inject the input image to, the larger the structures that get modified. And when the input is injected to a fine scale, only fine texture get modified while the global structure remain fixed. This is true for all the application. So the user can simply choose the desired effect. This harmonization approach works both for paintings and even for real photos. Singan can be also used for super resolution. Inherently, each of Singan's scales add content on top of the upsample generated images from the previous scale. So imagine we can train a Singan model on a low resolution image and then continue to upsample it using additional scales. Unfortunately, we do not have these generators because they correspond to image scales that are larger than the training image we have. However, since the statistic of patches within natural images tend to be similar across scales, we can simply assume that all the missing generators are equal to the, late, the last generator we have. Now, inputting the low resolution image into this extended pyramid leads to a super resolution effect. As opposed to other methods trained only on a single image like deep image prior and zero shot super resolution, Singan produces much sharper constructions. Surprisingly, Singan performs similarly to SRGAN, although SRGAN was exposed to more than 300,000 images during training. This is seen in a quantity evaluation on the Berkeley segmentation dataset. In terms of perceptual quality, quantified here by the popular Nike image quality measure, we are only slightly inferior to SRGAN. Here, lower is better and also significantly better than other methods that target PSNR. In terms of RMC, we are on par with SRGAN. One of the interesting properties of our super resolution scheme is that instead of super resolving a low resolution image, we can also super resolve random samples. This enables us to generate high definition images, which is often considered a real challenge with unconditional GANs. Here, for example, we generate four megapixel samples. A 
Another application, which is also my favorite, is animation from a single image. Here we travel through Singan's latent space to produce smoothly varying video clips. We found that for many types of images, the most realistic effect is achieved by Gaussian random walk with momentum in the latent space. The effect is that these still images can be brought to life. Here as well, we can control the animation effect, both by changing the random walk parameters and by choosing scene gun scales participating in it. So for example, we can animate a light wind, or a strong one. To conclude, we introduced Singan, a powerful generative model trained only from a single natural image. We showed how Singan can be used for, to generate realistic image samples. And also for a long line of image manipulation task. Our code is available, so you are welcome to check it out. Thank you. Okay, bring it on. Where are the questions? Can't see anything. Yeah. Nobody dares tackle you. <laughs> <laughs> They're afraid. Okay, so uh, more you can come up and maybe I have one question. Um, so what would be most difficult if we wanted to take this to 3D models? Um, so I think the, 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 the main challenge is um, memory, like computational um, challenges. Um, so the moment you have a 3D, 3D data, you, have, you need to have much more memory in order to process it. Okay, okay. thank you.